Okay. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. It's me, Dmitry Gerdnichi. Uh, I'm a research scientist with the Canada Board Research Agency, also a young professor at the University of Ottawa. And we're here to uh, talk about our uh, language. And essentially, I'm trying to help you to master, or at least to get comfortable with our language so you, that you can do something yourself. And today, uh, just because there were many requests essentially to help to speed up learning a curve uh, and to help you to really to start doing something yourself. So today we will change slightly the logistics. I will be doing less talking about other things, but we'll just go straight into the uh, coding. So I will start uh, sharing my screen uh, very soon. Uh, now, um, but before that, uh, again, let's uh, be reminded that we have about 30 minutes uh, in total, and uh, the session will be abrupted very uh, suddenly <laughs> when uh, uh, 40 minutes are over. So, uh, which means that uh, I may not be able to answer all, the, all, all of your questions right away, but again, I will try to answer all of them later anyway. So, I'm sharing with you right now my uh, main page. This is the page where we will be starting every, every time. And you will see I have added today for session four. Uh, let's, I'll refresh it. Okay, good. So, I, I'm, because I've just added, I've just added uh, new content there. So, please have a look with me at the same time. And... Uh, we will start from here. Okay, so first, um, what we see here? Uh, we see here that uh, uh, I will go quickly, very quickly through the learning resources. And in fact, these are already opened in my two tabs here. One is called Data Camp, and the other one is called rstudio.com. And uh, Mm. I'm responding to your requests, suggestions, and providing you homework. So homework is uh, right, right here. So these are free resources, absolutely free. You will be able to do all of them in rstudio.cloud. They are fun, they're interactive, they're built by professionals and enthusiasts. So over weekend, you can just have fun, really, to go to those three basic uh, primers. These are really introductory courses. So, and uh, another uh, course is very good course is here, a free introduction to R in data camp. And again, just spend some time. It's a lot of fun to see what people are doing there and what you could do. So now what is my purpose here, right? So I'm here, I cannot replace all those very well designed courses they're interactive they're very well made and they're like three hours each and we're here just for 30 minutes right so what i could do i can just share with you what i have learned myself and my background is slightly different again from the ground of most people who are doing data science these days these days because again as i mentioned i'm a computer scientist and the difference between computer science and data science is that we're building programs, we're building tools like applications for a computer to answer our questions. Like questions, okay, uh, where is the highest uh, uh, risk right now for COVID? Computer, please tell me, I need to know. Or another expert system, okay, what is going to happen tomorrow? Computer, please tell me. Now, if you do it yourself, then it's data science. You can visualize your curve, but again, you don't know where is actually the worst and the uh, you know situation for example that's a good example what i think is a good example of computing science versus data science uh you see many dashboards right now which just visualize you the statistics of uh, covid data and they even cannot answer you the question uh what is the most uh risky place right now in canada so right now i have developed a tool and it even shows you in coloring the highest mortality rate in Montreal right now. And it shows you the dynamic with the error right here. So it decreases. And now also you can 
actually you can do it for the entire United States uh, here. And imagine this database is huge and uh, you do want computer to help you to do this on your behalf. So this is a computer science project. So it goes and it finds 20 most dangerous places right now in United States. You see, it answers your question. Okay. And uh, that's what uh, data science, uh, it's more than just data science, it's really computer science. Now, uh, let's go back to here, because what I'm trying to do right now is really a sprint session to do from zero, assuming you know nothing, I know nothing, and all you, you have is just this page. And uh, you will open our Studio Cloud. I'm opening it right now. And you will open this R101 directory. This is where we keep our codes. So let's go to our cloud. That's exactly what you would see uh, there, right? And uh, now let's uh, uh, log in. You see, I even use a, a private browsing, so there are nothing stored there. It will be completely brand new. So I will uh, log in. Okay. And you can do the same at the same time if you wish. Okay. Now, maybe next time I will uh, actually I will be already having having this opened because I see computer is lagging in uh, because of recording I guess. It's really uh, lagging. Okay. Behind. Okay, so good. So that's where uh, you are. Normally you would not see, you would not see anything here. So you will create a new project. Let's create a new project. You click here and you create new project. It would take time, and what you would see here, in here, it says Untitled Project. So one of you have asked, uh, how do I rename it? You will go right there, and today we'll give a name called Session 4. And it will be empty project, it will be entirely empty project. So while it's loading, let's, okay, good. So uh, I will rename it right now. I will call it Session 4, you see? My cursor is right here, and I will rename it, I will call it session four. Now you see in this screen, you don't have any files there. You just have a project file. Now what we will do, we will create two files. One is called R script, and one is called R markdown. Okay, and we will uh, give names to uh, all of them. It takes time. In meanwhile, let's go here and open file 01read.r and we will copy it entirely. Actually, yeah, let's, let's do it just like that. Uh, we'll copy it entirely into my file. So I'm going there. Let's not do this yet. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'll do it again, again. So because I didn't want you to make sure you, you you're following me. So file our script, and we will uh, give it a name. Save as.
r and I will copy here all my contents. Okay, good. Now I will press Control S to save it. And what you see, what you see on the top, the studio, a studio has identified that you do have some libraries because I have them here and they are not installed. So you can click here, right here, install, and it will start installing those libraries which are, which are missing here. Now, another way of doing it is by going to tools and install packages. Library and packages, it's the same thing. Now, this will take a couple of minutes because it, uh, you see it's installing right now four libraries. So in meanwhile, we can go and have a look at uh, what else is in uh, R101 directory. We will go through this RMD file and we'll do the same. We will just copy entirely its contents. Okay. Sorry, Dimitri, can you just go back to what you copied first before this in the R read? Okay, we'll do that. I'll just finish my paste uh, here. Okay, and I will just also give a name for this file. So we're opening two R script files? We, ha we have opened one R script and one R markdown. Okay, because my R markdown looks different than yours, but okay. Yeah. Okay, so in this window, in this window, you will always see what is uh, created in your directory. You see, I have right now two, I have two uh, files, and these should be the same files as uh, you have here. You see? So I just pasted those files into our Studio Cloud. So the R read, all of R read from line one to 54? Yes. One to one to 154, all of it? Yeah, that's right, that's right. Okay. Uh, now let's uh, go back now to our R script. And I need to watch my time. So uh, really I'm trying to, to make it in 30 minutes. I'll just make sure I have not pasted anything else. Okay, good, good. So, and even more, you see it has already installed all packages. Very important. Because if you don't have those packages, uh, you will try to run it and you will get uh, an error. Now, if you have an error, always go to Google and I say we would always have three panels open. We have three panels open. We will have uh, R101, we will have our uh, our, our studio cloud and we'll have uh, Google because here you can say F3 in R so you would need to type normally just the name of the function and R and it would give you description of what uh, of what this function is doing and which package it is from so you would see it is from package called data table and you can uh, have many examples after that. Let's go back. So uh, we looked also uh, at the um, layout of your editor. Uh, you see that this window here, I wonder if you can see my cursor here. Okay, so it's uh, called uh, environment window. It shows you that currently you don't have anything stored by your computer essentially. Now we will create our first uh, variable. Control enter and I put, you see I put, uh, I will highlight it uh, where I'm putting it, right? And uh, left control enter. So I clicked and you see the line was executed and you can see it at the bottom. And you see values combined was assigned to a variable total. 
Now you will see I have a very unique way, not unique way, actually a very um, computer science way of programming. All my names are uh, written in such a way that I can understand right away what this variable is. So for example, when I write in capital, it means it's a constant. I'm not going to change it throughout my code. And again, where it's coming from, because in C++ or in Java or in many other those languages which we study in computer science uh, uh, you know, um, courses, that's what they teach us. The second way of uh, identifying your variable is uh, what's called prefix. For example, DT stands for data table. And I would know that everything which has DT in front of it is a data table. And later you see I have DT US. So I know it's data table with US data. You know, the same way here. It's uh, not just some uh, map. It's a map, it's a variable of type date and which has some max value. Because I found, you know, one thing which I found here, and you will see it yourself, you will be doing all those tutor uh, tutorials. I'm sure you will enjoy them, many of them. And you would see uh, they don't follow this uh, computer science uh, techniques or actually software engineering techniques, which are very important because your code will keep growing and you will get back to your code maybe in a month from now and you will forget what is uh, iris or I don't know, some other variable, A, X. You know, uh, the uh, psychology is the following. If you use your variable just within one screen, you know, in one, in one paragraph, and that's it. You can call it whatever you want. I, J, A, no problem. If it goes beyond one screen, what you can see right now, you need to give a name such that allows you to understand later the type of the variable, right? And essentially what it is doing. And later in the code, you see, I'm scrolling down. I see, okay, this is data table, which all, all it's also a good idea. All is something which combines everything together. So naming is very important. Another very important trick is table of contents. I showed it on my first uh, uh, session here. Very important. You get yourself organized because a code will keep growing. And if you don't understand, well, or if you don't, if you do not remember well, what your code is doing and how you can get through, let's say your libraries to your functions. I'm just clicking here. I'm just clicking here. You see, and it goes right away. Now, in order to create a label, you use four dashes here. It's like a comment, but four dashes. And in such a way, you can jump right away to reading geographical data, for example, and then maybe testing New York data. Another very good technique, again, it's coming from uh, software engineering skill. So uh, you do one step at a time, uh, one line. When you have more than one line, line, you pack them together. In the beginning, you can pack them with an if statement, like I, I'm doing here. And then uh, when you need to execute them, and we'll start executing them right now. I'm watching my time. I think we'll make it. Uh, now I put my cursor right here and control enter. Look, it's executing the entire pack within the bracket. It's convenient, right? So you don't need to go line by line. You just one click and it, it's done. So every time you have something uh, uh, in a pack, put it in if statement. Later, instead of if, you can write a function and it will be doing the same. Uh, we will. Right now, I will execute it. I'll put a line, I'll put, I'll put my cursor here, look. And I press Control Enter. And it does it. So, and in fact, in global variables, you already see a function has been added, right? Now, right now, you don't know what the function is. And we will just go one by line, uh, line by line. And normally, of course, you do not run a function before you know what it is doing you would normally just, again, line by line, do it, understand what's going on. Then you pack them together with the if statement. Then you run this if statement entirely. And then if it sounds okay, you give a name. Read. Right, Dimitri, sorry, I'm just gonna ask, for the control enter, that's to execute a function, like a, a, a line, is that what it serves for? No, uh, control enter executes a, a command, a command where the cursor is. A command starts with a bracket. 
and it ends with a bracket. Okay. So if you put your cursor, let's say right here, so it's essentially, it uh, sees the command starts here and it ends here. And the same with the if statement. So you remember here also, it was a bracket and another bracket. So that's why when I, I put my cursor here and I press control enter, look at the bottom, at the bottom, it runs the entire pack because for R, for computer, it's one command from the starting bracket to the ending bracket. Now, let's go now to a data science a piece. A data science piece starts, about, uh, starts with understanding the data. In the beginning, you know nothing about the data. You execute one line. Now, uh, what happens here? In fact, and okay, and this is uh, uh, very good because uh, uh, some of you would have the same problem. You run a function, let's say f read, and it shows me and it tells you uh, error in f read, install package. Now you know what to do. You need to install this package and let's do it together now. Remember, I, I told you uh, a way to do it. You can do it uh, from this menu, install package, and you will type it right here. And it, it is uh, installed because what happens, some uh, libraries are dependent on some other libraries, right? And, and on our first session, what we've done, uh, we've, uh, uh, I got a pack of libraries which uh, were very useful and I will show you this pack right here. So, and uh, what we have done, I, I moved the entire this section and then I essentially uh, closed the file, opened the file and uh, the our studio have identified all the missing libraries and it asked me to install it and I have installed them with one click. But again, you can do it manually. So I'm going back. Okay, seems like- oh, Just to go back, when it says install, like at the, in that yellow heading and you put in, it puts all of them so you don't have to go like one by one? Th that's right, that's right. Okay, so if I already did that, I don't need to put the curl package. Uh, no, uh, you may or may not. Because okay. if, if you only if you only did uh, these four uh, libraries, uh, most likely, like uh, I, uh, that's what I'm experiencing right now. Uh, another uh, library, uh, this C, C URL was missing, so I have just installed it. You see, I run it, mm -hmm. and uh, again, tools, install packages, and that's what you do. Uh, now let's go back to our F read line, and let's try to execute it now. Okay, success, right? Now it is telling me that uh, nine minutes uh, left. So I'm watching my time and I think I would be able to go line by line. So now the data science piece uh, commences and you need to understand uh, how to, uh, to view your data. So the main piece of data is data table. And to me, data table is your friend number one. When you go to those different tutorials, uh, in fact, you will not see data table in the beginning. And I think this is uh, maybe not the uh, most optimal way of doing it. Data table is very optimized and I will tell uh, one day later why it is so. I will probably dedicate just uh, one session uh, just to data table. Now, uh, let's just go back to how would you like to visualize your data? First, you can view a line. Show me the first line and the third line. Show me the last line, uh, dot n. Show me now the first, second, and the last and the second last, but only show me the first three columns. Now, okay, I see that I don't need the columns called uh, these. I will remove them because uh, I need to, to reshape my data so it looks beautiful to me. And that will give a new name for my variable. And now I can view it. I put my cursor there, control enter, and uh, now, okay, beautiful table. Now I understand what's going on there. Uh, now I don't like that some uh, spaces are blank because I need to visualize them. And this is why I'm giving them a new uh, value. So I'm finding all states which have blank 
and then replacing them with this combine. It just it gives uh, more meaning to me, and later we will visualize it this way. And now I can also reorder columns because later you would like to display them, and uh, you would like them to be displayed in a nice way. Okay, that's how I would like my table to look like. And this function is already ready, and it's ready to go. Now let's go now to the next function. Sorry, Dimitri, I'm. I'm doing the same thing as you, but I'm getting errors. Is there something missing? Which one? I, I did all the ones that you did, one line by line, and it keeps giving me okay, uh, uh, error let's, in set uh, name. Let's do the same. If you can, if you can uh, cut and paste maybe in chat, maybe that's the best way, and in, in fact, for our future okay. session uh, okay. as well. So you can paste it in a, in a chat box. I'm trying, yeah, my chat box. I see. So just paste it in the uh, chat box and I will try to execute it because I'll try to finish my uh, code. Remember, I sort of promised to finish it. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you after because I'm on two different computers. Okay, okay. So the same way here. Now, uh, uh, COVID data, um, again, uh, this uh, framework is the same. One line by line, you look at the variable, you see the first, uh, this last line, maybe uh, only 12 columns. And you see, I, I don't need all my columns. I need uh, just to keep just a few of them. And then I meld them. Uh, this is a very important function, which allows you to meld a horizontal data into uh, vertical data. And then uh, you can visualize it this way. Uh, you see that, okay, uh, that's how it looks. I'm giving new names and I'm reordering. So this set key allows me to reorder them and then I can visualize it. So that's how it looks. Good. So this is the table which shows the number of confirmed cases per day. And uh, what else do I have here? I do the same with death data. Now, I uh, suggest that you do it yourself uh, at home. You can just run line by line. And myself, I will just run the entire function. So I put my cursor here, control enter. And the function is, okay, uh, now it's in the memory of the computer. You see it, it is right now, right here. So we can execute those functions. Now you see the way I test those functions, I created a function called test me as a function. So I can test it. And line by line, now I have a variable called data table uh, geo. And uh, I can go and I have a look what's going on there. And uh, last time, remember, I noticed that there is no city called New York because it's called New York City. So we need to rename it. The same trick I've done with the geographical data in the past. Okay, now I have renamed it. Now I'm reading uh, COVID data. And uh, I'm trying to find when it was uh, last updated. So to get a column, a particular column from a data set, you use dollar sign and date. And max is a, a function which gives you a max, a value. Now, uh, on my second session, I talked about this operator. It's called pipeline. And this is a, a very useful uh, operator which allows you to, to, to do one action after another action. So I'll just quickly go. And we will look into uh, what's going on in uh, different uh, cities and states. So you can view the data for New York on our date max. And we see, okay, this is what is happening on 14th of May. They have, my goodness, 20 deaths a day. If this is, uh, this is, I just cannot even say it. It's so shocking. Uh, and you can see what's happening in uh, New York now. You can merge it, and that's another uh, essentially session we talked about merging data. You can take data from geographical data and you can merge it with your other data. So here first we will merge data uh, from different. I, I have to go quickly here because really I, I have just a few minutes left. And uh, I'm merging here with the geographical data. And here, uh, let's just plot something. 
because so here you go it's your first plot, plot. you you're plotting the data for new york for the last 30 days it's date max minus 13 and you plot it uh, uh for or uh for confirmed and death cases now if you want for the entire state look what it is so uh for the entire state you can and it shows you three cities these are the cities with most 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 uh, cases so uh, essentially i think in 20 minutes i was able to run it now the next step for you is you go to your r markdown and if you know that your file works fine then you can source it here and you the same way you put it uh cursor there and you run control enter and it has executed the entire file uh so i think i'm still here so but essentially you can now execute the entire line by meeting and uh, what it, it is doing i click now it will ask you to install a new package which is a central package to meet meet means compile text into the final report and it is doing the same thing normally you do it only once installs the missing libraries and then the beauty is that it will uh, execute all this code and you can generate a report so here we will probably we will stop right right here because a few more packages are missing at this point but the point is that once your code runs in a, a dot the or a dot r file you make sure it runs then you can uh take the entire file and you can source it from your report and this is what makes it uh, an app later we will be building app or it could be a report it could be html file it could be a pdf file it doesn't matter what is important that it will do the same tricks it will be essentially doing the same uh, reading of data of uh, us data geographical data and then visualizing and then visualizing the same uh, plot as we just visualized uh, there so maybe next time next week uh, that's what we will do we will continue from our markdown please send me your uh questions uh, uh on our chat by the way chat even though the section is deleted uh but the chat questions remain so i can i can uh, read your questions later and i will answer them so next time we will continue from